The tech world keeps promising AI that truly understands human communication. But scientists just tested this claim using something called driveology, and the results are shocking. These systems that can allegedly think like humans completely fail at the basic human skill of finding meaning in paradox and humor. What if the AI revolution has been built on a fundamental misunderstanding of what intelligence is? I'm Evan Goldstein, I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist, and I'm building AI capitalists to talk to the leaders and the thinkers, like you, about navigating this brave new world of thinking machine. Have you ever read something that seems like complete nonsense at first glance, but it actually contains clever hidden meaning? Researchers have discovered that while humans can usually detect these deeper meanings, even the most AI systems completely miss the joke. A team of researchers from University of Manchester, Durham University, and the University of Sheffield identified a unique linguistic phenomenon they call driveology. Basically, it's nonsense with depth, as they call it. These are statements that appear absurd on the surface, but they contain hidden layers of meaning that you require cultural knowledge and emotional intelligence or some sort of verbal understanding to really grasp. So think about the statement, I deeply admire Che Guevara's anti-capitalist spirit, so I bought all of his merchandise. The humor and the irony come from the contradiction between admiring anti-capitalism while participating in capitalism by actually buying all of his stuff. This requires understanding who Che Guevara was and understanding the paradox. Okay, so here's the paper of Driveology challenging LLMs with interpreting nonsense with depth. Now, figure two in the report, the diagram lays out there, figure one, lays out their entire testing framework for how well AI models can understand Driveology, which is basically sophisticated nonsense that actually means something deeper. The researchers set up four different challenges, detecting whether text is drivological at all, tagging what type it is, writing explanations of the hidden meaning, and then picking the right interpretation from when they give it a bunch of multiple choices. So here they start off with, I saw a book called How to Solve 50% of Your Problems, So I Bought Two Books. And the AI was trained to tag that as either driveology or not driveology. We're trying to get into the the nitty gritty of a joke and see where does this come from and in this case it gets it right or wrong and it's trained this way so this experiment compared how the same AI models performed when they were given instruction in English versus Mandarin and then they tested the models on all the tasks using both languages as the instruction manual so to speak they changed around the prompt language and the specific task type they were given now, we see when the models got English instructions, they crushed tasks requiring precise language matching. But when they got Mandarin prompts, they became better at understanding the actual meaning and the cultural context of what they were being told. It, giving someone directions in their native language helps them navigate better, even when the destination is in a foreign country. So another part that's interesting of their research is that they tested over easy and hard tests of this nature in different languages. I know that Japanese was more successful, but if you look at the easy ones, obviously they're getting in the mid eighties, but they're on the difficult questions. There was a huge difference in languages. We might expect this because subtlety in language really varies from culture to culture. Now this really shows how quickly performance drops as tasks require deeper reasoning. So what's interesting is that it seems like while other parts of large language models and agency is just growing by leaps and bounds, they can pass the bar, they can answer the most difficult scientific questions created. We're not even close to AI that actually gets jokes the way that humans do, like not even in the ballpark. The laugh comes at a moment when you connect two different frameworks of reference in a new way. Example. There's the old story about a woman doing a survey into sexual attitudes who stops an airline pilot and asks him, amongst other things, when he last had sexual intercourse. He replies, 1958. Now, knowing airline pilots, the researcher is surprised and queries this. Well, says the pilot, it's only 2110 now. <laughs> we laugh, eventually, at the moment of contact between two frameworks of reference, the way we express what year it is in the 24-hour clock. Now, having an idea, a new idea, is exactly the same thing. It's connecting two hitherto separate ideas in a way that generates new meaning. I think that clarifies why AI will never be funny, or at least the AI that we have now. Think of what a language model is at its most basic level. 
It's just predicting the next word in a sentence. It's therefore going to go to the most common word that it can find within its training data. You know, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Jack and Jill went up the hill. And it builds from there. But this is really the heart of what it's even able or capable of outputting. So in order for it to produce anything, it has to stay within its own frame of reference. It can never mix two different frames of reference into a single output. That's the bit the computer can't do. It can produce millions of new connections, but it can't tell which one of them smells interesting. And, of course, you'll produce some juxtapositions which are absolutely ridiculous. Absurd. Good for you. Because Edward de Bono, who invented the notion of lateral thinking, specifically suggests in his book Poe, Beyond Yes and No, that you can try loosening up your assumptions by playing with deliberately crazy connections. So it's more than just AI missing jokes. This is revealing a deeper limitation in how these systems process language. They excel at pattern recognition and statistical relationships between words, but they struggle with the contextual understanding that we humans can naturally bring to communication. The AI might recognize something unusual about a statement like, I'm good at everything except what I can't do, but it fails to appreciate the self-deprecating humor or the wordplay. Now, this is coming at a time when a lot of people are questioning whether AI systems might truly understand language or if they're just mimicking patterns that they've seen. The ability to uh, comprehend driveology is very uniquely human in its as a form of intelligence because it combines cultural knowledge and emotional awareness and the ability to navigate ambiguity. And if you're getting value from this episode, I'd appreciate it if you'd push the like button. It really does help the channel grow. So with all that, what's the AI capitalist approach to this? Well, there pose a critical blind spot in AI development that businesses need to look at. If a business is investing in a customer-facing artificial intelligence or using it for content generation, this isn't just academic, this is a liability. If an AI can't detect when a customer is being sarcastic or ironic or using cultural shorthand, the misunderstandings that could come out of this could damage customer relationships and brand reputation. So what's your take? Is this AI limitation a fundamental roadblock that's gonna grow over time where you're gonna have one type of intelligence that's human and another type that's artificial? Or is this just another hurdle that next generation models are gonna overcome? Leave a comment below on your thoughts on whether AI can ever really understand our jokes.